Hello everybody, welcome back to the second match. We are on the draw. We're going to keep, have a pretty nice hand. Some good mix of lands and business. Some zero visions early on, so I'll just go for Hello Fountain for start and zero visions. This might be Crix's Death Shadow because if it was burned they would have probably done something on the first turn. So I would assume most likely that it's Crix's Death Shadow from the Bloodstained Mire. Alright, so I think I'll leave both on top actually. So we can like possibly draw both next turn before we fetch. And we drew a false land, which was a bit unfortunate, but yeah. <laughs> but as you can see so far we mostly had more of a tendency to flood than to screw because of the cantrips and stuff, which is why I'm a very big fan of 18 lands. I think the 19th land is just too much. I'm very convinced of this. Like 12 cantrips has always been 18 lands. The Delver decks in the past have been running 18 and they have only run um, 10 to 11 cantrips really, so I just don't see it. Um, so it is not either of the decks that I considered. So this might be a slow drum draw or some kind of like red black fringe deck. Alright, so definitely have to fatal push to start confident. Question is do we want to draw the zero visions? I don't think uh the thought go, I don't think that's very important. So I would be inclined to just add shuffle here first. So we don't shuffle away the scry from the zero ambitions. And then fatal push this guy. Or maybe even just also charm it. Keep this for something like more important. That's an interesting question. I mean it puts us to fourteen, this would put us to thirteen. That's not optimal. I think I'll just zero ambitions first. See what we got. Only souls, second from top, let's see his top, and then I think we just get rid of this guy. But yeah, the Sword Seas and Young and Souls are nice. We can draw either both or only the Sword Seas and then shuffle, depending on what our opponent's doing. <coughs> I think since this seems to be Jund, I definitely want both, so we retreat race, and then we just go for like. action. I think this is the point where we just go for like <coughs> basic swamp. Sword Seas and Oz of Charm. See what's up. And next turn we can undo some Death Shadows. Alright. <coughs> I think Ballista is like whatever. So it's really just command or push. And I would be inclined to say push, because that kills a Death Shadow. And they're both going to be pretty big. So yeah, I think I'll take the Fatal Push here. And kill this guy. <laughs> because by the time he got back the like dark confident with the command, it's whatever. So right now our death shadows would be five fives, which is a good number. That's fine. Like we could also lingering souls, but he basically has to top deck Liliana because he top decked the Goyf. So I think it's fine to like delay Liliana return because that gives us like more pressure and a better defense. We can like make both of them eight eight so blocked so they like survive. Command plus I'm um, the Goyf and stuff like that.
All right, that's fine. Don't care about that. I think I'll just leave this open as like a potential trick. Oh, we don't need it. <coughs> okay, now we might actually need it. So if we go to like five, that's too risky. So I think I'm gonna just like fetch a tapped shock duel here. So we can go like double lingering souls and <coughs> get into the red zone. There we go. And even like hard cast a street race if we would want to. It's kind of nice. <coughs> no, he definitely has the block, which is good. And his last hand card is the Colligan's Commander, we still know. I mean, if he shoots us, he even like takes extra damage. All right. So we just basically don't want him to draw a lightning bolt on his turn. Then we're good. Or Pulse. Mates from Pulse would also be devastating. There's an argument to be made to play it more like conservative, just attack with one Death Shadow and stuff and play more around this stuff. But in that way we just give him like one draw step on a bolt or a pulse and then he just loses the game, there's nothing he can do. Realistically. Plus waiting makes Ballista more dangerous and stuff. And opens us up to other cards. It's fine. <coughs> Ballista. And now he's like gonna set us up for a top deck bolt, basically. By going to one and pinging us to three. Which is a good play, like, I mean, it's the best he can do under the circumstances, really. Just drop this. So one draw steps on four outs. No lightning bolt. That's but yeah, this is one of the matchups where lingering souls really shines in my opinion. So I'm gonna be really happy to see that in action. Um Stubborn Denial in the past has not been very good in this matchup. Worse so than I think the discard stuff. And there's not really anything else we need or want. I mean, we could bring in like Nihil Spellbomb against like Command maybe. For the last denial. That seems reasonable. Let's try it like this. But yeah, <coughs> there you see why the like split of like Nihil Spellbomb and Extraction is kind of nice because you can bring it in here, Extraction would not be good, but allows us to like get rid of both denials. Which we don't necessarily have to. I mean, it's not like it's terrible but it's like kind of situational so in like Esper Delph and usually didn't like it and just rather took it out for like cards that did more <coughs> and I think tendentially 
the six discard spells are gonna serve us better than denial, especially also because especially sword cast uh, sword seize. I mean maybe denial could be better than Inquisition, but not sure. Like Inquisition can hit their discard spells, the Lilianas and early threats and stuff. It just does a lot of like flexible stuff. Just bad later on. But much much better in the early game. Which I think is what matters more. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Feel about it. Alright, this is a really good one lander. Uh, almost perfect one lander basically, so happy keep. And yeah, I'm probably going to lead with a zero ambitions over a sword score. So we can make sure we find a second land, because if we do, we can potentially angler turn two if it's a fetch land. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So this is like three, yep, six. <coughs> that means turn two go back angler if the opponent doesn't discard the angler first, which is probably not gonna happen. They usually play a two drop on turn two. I mean, since we're on the draw, there's still the problem of us sort of posing ourselves to Liliana, but what can you do? Which is also, I guess, because it's a dark confident, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this instead. Any other loss of charm has been pretty decent so far. It allows us to like, run a seventh removal without flooding on removal, really, basically. Um. I think what I want to do here is pick <coughs> sword score myself first and then just go for like a sword seize to see if there's Liliana. Just another Tamagolf, also good. <coughs> and like at the end of his draw step, we get to pass, so he has maximum chance to draw land on his draw step and then we get rid of the Goyf and next turn we can just go nuts with the Gormac Angler or just Lingering Souls to set up Gormac Angler protected from Li uh, Liliana. But yeah, this game is looking really good for us. I mean, I guess we could have just waited till like combat. only important after he draws, so he gets a higher chance to draw another land because his hand was all lands and that the land is tapped from pass. But Moon didn't see that one coming. That might just cost us the game. Oh yeah. This is like Blood Moon and Junt, that's new. And Cardos of Guard. Nice top deck. Yeah, I think this is over. <coughs> Another thing, I guess, where the discard is helpful. Although in that case it came off the top, so not a whole lot we can do. Which makes me think that I probably want this denial and maybe like a second and like... Cut one discard spell. I think I want to try that. Also kind of like how oh, Street Race is like a reasonable threat in this matchup if it gets really grindy because it's lightning bolt proof and it's unblockable, so it's like a 3-4 unblockable. I mean it costs 5, but at a certain point it won't matter if the game goes long enough and it's grindy enough. So it gives you like extra virtual threat density, something that say the old Gitaxian probe didn't. Alright, we're on the play. Hand's pretty decent. That's... Get started with this. 
Now we definitely play around like Blood Moon. Yeah, I think I'll take the Goy for now and then and like Snapcaster, Lotsies, some other stuff. I mean, we can fetch like Island Swamp here if we need to, although that uh, allows us to only play like one blue spell a turn. That's a neat top deck, I would say. Unfortunate because I'm hmm, not even sure if I want to use this. Also, the spell bomb kind of ruins the fun for us here. I think I'll wait a turn on the Inquisition. Because he only had one draw step to tour target for it, because he only has the Tassigur. That's like the thing, it's really disappointing to draw the one Inquisition after we sword seized the good target for it, basically. I think is also a good one here. And he can theoretically like go for the guy next turn. Um, I think I'm fine with just uh, if I get a swamp here I can't death shadow. So maybe I just get a watery grave anyway. Yeah, I think that's cool. Because that allows us some more stuff. Now he's like gonna pop the thing and then we either Death Shadow or Inquisition. <laughs> Probably we can Inquisition because he now had like two draw steps and the draw from Bell Bomb, so it's kinda good to. Inquisition there, I guess. Oops. And then we can at least like flashback Inquisition next turn if it's worth it. And there is the Blood Moon. That's good. Because I kind of expect him to go for like Tassigur next turn, not Liliana, and then we can snap cast through Inquisition to Liliana as well, which is sweet. Looks like he might go for Liliana after all. No, he top decked the Blood Moon, really? This is so ridiculous, really? Like how many Blood Moons is he playing? I guess I wish I would have gone for the swamp now. This is just... Yeah, I mean... We're just gonna lose now to the million blood moon junt, apparently. I mean, there's nothing we can do at this point anymore. He just has Tassigo and we're just done. And next turn he can Liliana even. So yeah, we just go. That was very frustrating. I mean, I really don't think with like the discard and him only having like two to three unknown cards, we should and can take the swamp here because then we cannot like death shadow and 
are very limited in our uses. And if he has a Blood Moon, we can take it. So he needs to top deck as have, he has to top deck one the next turn. I don't know. This is just sometimes you're just very frustrated. We lost to top deck Blood Moon out of John two games in a row. Like both times he didn't have it in hand, and the next turn he just ripped it off the top and jammed it. Also, like apparently he plays quite a bunch if he has like back to back Blood Moons. I mean, maybe I missed something, but as far as I know, uh, running a million Blood Moons in Jund is not something you expect people to do. But I mean, I guess it's pretty effective if you catch people by surprise with it. Next time I will be prepared, I guess. And I mean, I even was prepared in the third game, but it still got me because Blood Moon is actually just in general pretty good against this deck, especially if you're forced to like fetch in the way. I felt like we were. Alright, that's it for the second match. That was a bit of a frustrating outcome, but sometimes that happens. Um, stay tuned for the last match coming up in a moment. Thanks for watching.